Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin, a different way to visualize the market cycle. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. We are having a Black Friday sale on the premium list. We're gonna have that run for the next two weeks or so, basically just until the end of the month. So if you would like to join the premium list and get access to weekly reports and videos, the Telegram alerts channel, the Telegram chat room, the risk dashboard, and more, Make sure you guys go check out the link in the description below and you can lock in the lower rate for the next two weeks. And as long as you do not cancel, you can keep that rate. Let's go ahead and jump in. We've talked a lot about Bitcoin's market cycles. We've, me we've measured them from the bottom. We've measured them from the halving. I also thought it might be interesting to measure it from the final shakeout before the impulsive rally that took us to the new all-time highs. It's not a way we've looked at it before. We've looked at it for Ethereum like that on more than one occasion. Why don't we look at it for Bitcoin as well? What I'm talking about is technically speaking, the market cycle bottom of Bitcoin was in December of 2018. But we also know there was a final shakeout in March of 2020. And this shakeout occurred approximately 66 weeks later, maybe 60, 65 weeks later, about 65 weeks later from the bottom over here to this bottom, 65 weeks. Now, technically speaking, the market cycle bottom was in December. But if you look at, say, the fair value of Bitcoin and, and recognize that while the technical market cycle bottom was in early December 2018, that was only about 53% below the fair value, whereas the one in, say, March of 2020 was 70% or more below the fair value. What does that mean? Well, what it means is that while technically speaking, the price in 2018 was lower, you could argue that the 2020 capitulation was more undervalued just because the fair value of Bitcoin at the time was a lot higher. Okay. So remember that this was about 66 weeks or so. Okay. Six or 65 weeks between, between this shakeout and then the, the next shakeout that did not go to the same price or down to the same price, but it still was a final shakeout before the next you know, parabolic rally that took Bitcoin up into these valuations up here that took it to a new all time high, 65 weeks. Now, what if we were to go back and do the same thing last cycle? We know that last cycle, the market cycle bottom was in January of 2015. We also had another shakeout later on in August of 2015. That is approximately 31 weeks later, about 31 weeks later, we had a, We had another shakeout that wasn't a market cycle bottom but it was a sizable shakeout before the parabolic rally started. You might look at this and say, well, isn't this technically about the same or even maybe lower than this first one? This index was not created until the last several months or so. If you go back and look at basically any exchange, here's Coinbase, you can see the, the, the wick in January 2015 was much lower. We had weekly candles that were lower as well. You go look at Kraken, the same thing, much lower here in 2015 or early 2015 than later. You go look at, at say, Bitstamp, also the same thing, much lower over here than over here. For whatever reason, on this one, it doesn't include the wick uh, down as far, and then this one goes down further than it really went on, on basically any exchange that I saw. Uh, but for whatever reason, that's why I use this one as opposed to this one. But what if we use this one, the, the second one? And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna simply take a bar pattern and then look at that return and over what, over what period of time it came. So we're gonna overlay it like that, okay? And then from here, what we can do is say, well, where are we in this cycle compared to that move? Well, interestingly enough, at the same point in this cycle, as measured from the last cycle, if we were measuring it not from the market cycle bottom, but for the second, but from the last shakeout, we should only be at 30K, right? That shows you just how, how quickly this move happened after the March capitulation. Remember, the last cycle was a more methodical, slow move up with frequent tests of the 20 week moving average, right? We didn't have a, a, you know, a manic rally like this one to then come back down into a long accumulation phase and then go back up. That, you know, last cycle was not a double peak cycle. I've argued for years that every cycle will have its own characteristics, okay? This cycle over here was straight up. This one was a double peak. This one was a more methodical test of the 20 week moving average. We said back a year ago that this could be another double peak cycle, but at the very least, it could be a stretched out version of 2013. 
Again, if you were to look at 2013 and overlay it on this one, 20, the 2013 peak would have already come a long time ago. To give you an idea of what I'm talking about, you just take a bar pattern from here and go over, and, and, and as you measure it from, say, the market cycle bottom, you can see we, we should have already put in that second peak a long time ago. If you shift it to over here, you can see that we still have, we can still have a ways to go out until, say, March or um, April or March of, of 2022. But what's interesting is a lot of people assume that the next leg of the cycle is just going to be this parabolic rally that's going to take place over the next six weeks and take us to several hundred thousand dollars. But remember, it takes a lot more money to move the market cap today than it did back in 2013. So the idea that we can emulate those returns, again, in a very short period of time is pretty, pretty unfounded in my opinion. I think it's more likely that Bitcoin is going to have a continued slower grind up you can see we basically spent the entirety of 2021 between say 30k and 65k or so with some with some moves above it would i be surprised if bitcoin didn't put in a new all-time high this year yeah i probably would be somewhat surprised like I, I feel like there's a decent chance it goes to 70k by the end of the year or, or 80k or, or higher potentially but the the issue is that a lot of people are just sort of assuming that we're going to have this manic blow off top in six weeks and and then we're just going to come back down it, to, to me, it seems like if everyone in the market is expecting a manic rally over the next six weeks to $300,000, everyone's going to just front run it and sell before we get to that point. Therefore, it's very likely not going to manifest. A lot of people say, well, if everyone believes it'll happen, then it'll come true. I would argue it's more likely that if everyone believes that, that we're going to have a 80% shakeout in the next six weeks, then that might make people hesitant and they might already be offloading some positions just to manage their risk. You know, there's a big difference between say, between, say someone who's managing a small amount of money and someone who's managing, say, the, uh, a hedge fund or something, right? They might not want to take that risk. And if they think there's going to be a huge, a huge crash or something in 2022, because that's what everyone's telling them, then perhaps they'll just take some off the table and continue to delay what we think is inevitably going to happen. So, you know, the idea that the next leg of the cycle is just going to be a manic rally for the next six weeks or something is a little bit too far-fetched, I think. Could we go up over the next six weeks? Six weeks? Of course we could. But I'll also say this. The same people that are calling for 300K over the next six weeks were also calling for the parabolic rally to continue back over here. And, and now that it hasn't, and we've been going sideways for about a month or so, rather than shift their prediction out to 2022, uh, they are, they're just making, they're, they're compressing the time frame in which Bitcoin has to go to their price prediction uh, by saying it's basically just going to go straight up any day now, right? Straight up any day now. Um, but I, I think it's more interesting to look at, say, things like, what about the angle of attack on this stuff? Okay, let's look at the angle of attack on this first rally over here. Okay, so we're going to go over here and we're going to say, take the angle, we're going to get the trend angle and we're going to measure this one. The angle of attack was approximately 54 degrees at this aspect ratio. Remember, it will depend on the aspect ratio you use. As you can see, the angle will change depending on the aspect ratio you use. Now, the interesting thing, though, and actually, I'm going to go ahead and zoom this in a little bit better and, and, and have it be a little bit clearer to read. This one was about 53 degrees. Let's call it 53 degrees or so. Now, if we go measure the one we're currently in today, you can see that, I mean, it's hard to measure it, but the trend angle is a lot less. If we say just measure it from September, up to where we currently are, you know, 38 over here, 47 over here. This one was this one was steeper, 53 degree move. You can also see that the 20 week moving average was moving up a lot quicker, right? I mean, like look at how quick the 20 week moving average is moving over here, and then look at it over here. It's not nearly as fast. So what does that tell us? Well, it tells us that the cycle is not moving as quickly as it did in the first leg so far, right? It's just simply not. What's interesting though, if you go back and look at 2013, the first cycle, like you can, you can take a look at the angle of attack uh, of the first, say, sub cycle within that one. And, and if we just say sort of measure that, it's about 68, 70 degrees. And if we do it with the second one, it's also about 75 degrees. So a fairly, a fairly consistent trend higher in both of them. They're fairly impulsive moves by both of them and they took us to, to manic, crazy times in the market. Now, everyone's expecting that today, and one thing to consider, though, is that every cycle will be different. The idea that we can look at any prior cycle and know exactly what's going to happen and line it up and say, all right, well, last cycle it went up on 10% on this date, or it dropped 5% on this date, therefore it has to do the exact same thing again, it just seems a little like 
wishful thinking, right? It, it seems a lot like wishful thinking. Remember, if you would use the second cycle to predict what happened in the third cycle, you would have potentially been predicting a double top. And if you were around back in 2018 in crypto, a lot of people were calling for this to be a double top and to just go up and do something like that. That's the danger of assuming that one cycle has to repeat the prior one. We called for a potential double peak cycle a long time ago, but if it is a double peak cycle, I would say it's a stretched out version of 2013. For all we know, it could be a triple peak cycle. We could have a long way to go. So let's be pragmatic about this. What if, and here's a, a crazy idea, what if the first leg of the market cycle that we're in today emulated 2013? What if the second leg of this market cycle emulates 2017? And rather than having a manic move up over the next six weeks to several hundred thousand dollars, what if it's a slower grind up and we move up and then we come back down and then we go and then we test the 20? What if something like that happens? Then it would be sort of like a, a mix of 2013 and 2017. I think it's something we should at least consider, uh, especially when when looking at at that move that we looked at earlier. If you if you say just measure it from this bottom here and then overlay it, it would actually put the next market cycle peak in 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 the summer of 2022. Now you could even argue though that it could go beyond that, right? We'll take it one step at a time. Right now we just got to get to 2022 because there's so many people that just assume it's going to go up in the next six weeks to to you know, three or four X where we currently are. Let's see what happens, right? Let's see what happens. Um, I, I, I do think it's possible Bitcoin goes up for sure, but to, to reach 200K, 300K by the end of the year seems highly unlikely, okay? So remember, if you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe. We also do have the sale on the Black, or we also have the Black Friday sale on the premium list. So make sure you guys check that out. You can lock in the lower rate as long as you do not cancel. So if you've been waiting for a time to sign up, now would be a good time. You can find a link to that sale in the description below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'll see you next time, bye.